guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Becca, and today I have Becca's Bookopoly round 28. guys are unfamiliar with Bookopoly at all this is the TBR game that I play every single month I roll the dice I land on prompts around the board and I have to pick books that fulfill those prompts if you have never seen a Bookopoly before I will put a link to January's Bookopoly up here where you will get a full tour of the board and all of the rules and if you guys would like to catch up on everything today the Bookopoly playlist will also be linked in the description box but for those of you who know what's going on here let's see what happened with last month's rolls. So for March's Bookopoly, we had five books. We had All the Birds in the Sky by Charlie Jane Anders as a chance card. We had Truth Witch by Susan Dennard as a fantasy. The Midnight Queen by Sylvia Hunter as other. Rat Queens Volume 4 High Fantasies as a comic. And then we also had an ebook which was Beneath the Keep by Erica Johansson. And that one was for the prompt to read an ebook. And I am very sad to say that of these five books, I have read one of them and attempted to read another. Now at the time that I'm filming this there are still five days of the month but I still have yet to even start All the Birds in the Sky, Truth Witch or Beneath the Keep. So I think this month I'm going to be taking a punishment. If I do manage to have read two and started one by the end of the month then we'll just scrap the punishment. I'll let you know in my vlogs but it is seeming very unlikely at this moment. So we are dipping straight into the punishment jar. It is many many months since I've had to pull something from this. All of them are prompts that would be classed as undesirable. I cannot remember what's in here at this point but I do know that some of them are truly truly awful and some of them I can kind of work with so let's see what we've got this month. I'm really scared. And this month's punishment prompt is one of the books I'd never read. Mm. I need to go consult my videos. Okay, so in the past I have made three videos called hyped books that I won't be reading and I've just skimmed through all three of those and I, I feel like I, I know what you guys are gonna want me to read but I've picked one book from each of those videos and at the time that this video goes live, I'm going to be putting a poll on my Twitter, link in the description box, and I want you guys to vote on which of the books that I said that I would never read that I'm going to be reading in the month of April. So the first book from the first video I did is going to be Stalking Jack the Ripper by Kerry Maniscalco. This is a historical fiction. I said I didn't want to read this because I don't love historical fiction. The second one is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black, which I have said I will never read because I do not like Holly Black's writing style. You guys keep telling me to read it. I keep saying no because I'm just gonna hate your favorite book, but that's going in there. And the third one is going to be Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. I just don't think it's my kind of romance. I have this thing for some reason, if I see bright illustrated covers on a romance, I assume that they're not the kind of romance that I'm gonna want to read. So yeah, those three are going in a poll on my Twitter. Vote on them and I will be picking up one of those in April. Oh no. So my plans for April, I don't think at this moment that there are any readathons I'm going to be participating in, like long intensive ones, but there is going to be another 24 hour readathon happening right at the beginning of April. It's the first Saturday, so I think it's the third. And that one is just a 24 hour readathon hosted by my friend Jade at JJ Reads. You just stay up for 24 hours and read what you want. So I'm gonna be participating in that, but there are no readathons, I don't think, that have any like prompts that I need to fulfill or anything. So pretty much empty were open in what I'm going to be putting on my TBR. I do have some things that I need to read for like read-alongs and stuff. I have a few April arcs but other than that anything goes. So that being said let us see what Bookopoly has in store for me this month. Okay so last month we ended on ebook. First roll is an 11. And that is a science fiction. So roll number one was a sci-fi and straight up this is the one that I asked my patrons to vote on for the month. So the options I gave them were Born by Jeff Vandermeer. This is a, I'm assuming really weird because it's Jeff Vandermeer, adult standalone sci-fi that has a big flying bear in it. We have Ready Player Two by Ernest Cline, the sequel to Ready Player One. It's a virtual reality sci-fi. Ready Player One is one of my favorite books ever. Unchosen by Catherine Blair. This is an arc that I have failed to get to and this 
this one is like a post-apocalyptic dystopian story about a girl whose siblings are supposed to be the chosen ones. However, for some reason, she's probably going to end up saving the world. And finally, we have Deviate by Jay Kristoff. This one is the sequel to Lifelike and it is a young adult post-apocalyptic Anastasia retelling. So the poll had 78 votes total and the winner with 50% of the vote was Deviate by Jay Kristoff. Kind of surprised and unsurprised because Jay Kristoff is known. He's one of my favourite authors and he's also a really popular author. But this series in itself is not too popular. So in here we are following a young girl called Eve and I think she's a cyborg and she stumbles across an android that is a lifelike and this is illegal tech because many moons ago the lifelikes were created and they didn't like being servants to humans so they rebelled and so the tech was made illegal. You can't make lifelikes anymore. But Eve finds one and they journey across the wasteland together while Eve is discovering some secrets about her past in the meantime. I gave the first book four stars. Didn't love it through. I don't really like the setting in this series but the plot twist and the whole conclusion of book one was wild. So I'm hoping for good things from this one although I do think it's from the perspective of a different character maybe. Roll number two is eight and that is Other. Rule number two was Other and this is perfect because released on I think the 6th of April we have You Love Me by Caroline Kepners which is the third book in the You series, You being one of my favourite books of all time. So if you are unfamiliar with You, there is a Netflix show that has been based on it. It is an adult thriller. It's told in second person and we are in the mind of this man called Joe. Nice stand-up guy, you know, really sweet, really kind, works in a bookshop, seems like a really genuine guy until a young woman walks into the bookstore where he works and he quickly becomes infatuated with her and begins to stalk her. I really love the way this book makes you question your morals because you're in the mind of Joe and you know everything he's thinking and he's feeling as he's carrying out these atrocious acts and the thing about Joe is that he's actually really relatable and outward perspective ways he looks like a really stand-up like good guy but um yeah, he's a stalker. So absolutely love this series. Expecting really good things from the third book. So I'm going to take this opportunity to put it on my TBR to make sure I read it as soon as it arrives. Roll number three is six. And that is a fantasy romance. Roll number three it was a fantasy romance and for this one I'm going to be adding my only other I think pre-order to my TBR and that is The Crown of Gilded Bones by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is the third book in the Blood and Ash series which is a new adult fantasy romance series that follows this young woman called Poppy who is known as the Maiden. Now she lives a very secluded life, she's not allowed to be looked upon, not allowed to be touched, she can't talk to people and she's kept in seclusion. The love interest in these books is a man called Hawk who has risen through the ranks of the guard and he has been assigned to guard Poppy until her ascension. The ascension is like this big mysterious thing that happens aside from the people who go through it and don't talk about it. Nobody really knows what it is and those two start to grow closer as Poppy questions whether this is actually the life that she wants for herself. Now the story after two books has come a long way from there and with every book like we get more in-depth fantastic elements, more reveals, more crazy dramatic plot twists and from where the second book left off I am so excited to dive into this and find out what happens next and I will also be making a spoilery vlog video on this one when it's released and I've read it so keep your eyes peeled if you have also read it and want to know my in-depth spoilery thoughts. Rule number four is six again and that is a comic. Roll number four was a comic and I'm not mad about it. We always love to get a little comic in there to make things move a little faster, a little smoother. And this month I'm going to be reading Isola Volume 2 by Brendan Fletcher and Carl Kershaw. So this is a comic book series that follows Captain Rook who is the captain of the Queen's Guard and Captain Rook has been tasked with a very important quest as her queen has been transformed into a big glowy blue tiger which you can see her on the cover just there. So Captain Rook has to take the Queen to the mystical kingdom of Isola to try and have the spell reversed. I was very intrigued while reading the first volume. There's a whole lot about this world and this series that I don't yet understand but the first volume definitely had potential and I'm excited to continue into this one. I really like the art in this. The majority of it is all kind of like 
color wash so we have a lot of pages that are just all the same color and yeah it's stunning i was intrigued by the story and i'm excited to continue with volume two and what may be our final roll roll number five is a double and that is a book for a video project. Roll number five is not our final roll. And for roll number five, I got video project, which hasn't come up yet. But this space is for any books that I may need to read for an upcoming video. And I was kind of torn about what to pick for this, but I'm going with Dream Country by Shay Brown. This is an arc that is released, I think, at the end of April, around the 20th, somewhere there. This was kindly sent to me by the publisher, Ennui, to show to you guys. So thank you so much, Ennui, for sending this my way in like a beautiful promotional box and this follows the triplet gods of sleep dreams and nightmares who have all been accused of murdering the mother that is all i know about it but i'm very intrigued about the mythology in here and the gods the kingdom of the gods and all of that and yeah i'm, I'm actually really excited about this one so i do hope it lives up to my expectations and let's try again for our final roll roll number six is a three and that is a fantasy. And roll number six was to read a fantasy and I have quite a few read-alongs and things I'm participating in. So I was also torn on this one, but I've decided to go with another arc because I do have quite a few of those and I'm desperate to read this one because this one is Malice by Heather Walter. This was sent to me by the team over at Del Rey to review for you guys. So thank you so much to Del Rey for that. And this is an adult, actually, I think. I thought it was young adult, but I think it's an adult fantasy. Sleeping Beauty retelling told from the perspective of one of the evil fairies that cursed Aurora except this fairy in particular falls in love with her and is trying to break the curse. So excited from this. It has so many elements in it that I love. I'm thrilled to find out that it is actually adult. I love retellings. I love fairy tales. I love villain stories and then a sapphic romance in here just makes it all that much better. So yeah really excited to dive into this. Really really expecting good things and and I'm going to be so disappointed if I don't like this. So please keep your fingers crossed for me. So that was it for my Bookopoly TBR, which is actually looking pretty manageable at the moment. But the reason for that is that two of the books, which are substantially chunky, I don't have yet because they're pre-orders. So I think that this stack is going to be adding up quite quickly. But I just have one more book that I'm adding to my solid TBR. And that is my monthly Inner Circle Patreon pick. As you guys probably know by now, if you are a member of my Inner Circle tier on Patreon, you can recommend me a book. It goes into this Part and then every month I have to I have to pick a book to read. Always makes me nervous. There's some big things in here, but let's let's see what we've got this month. Oh my god. I'm scared. I'm very scared. And this month we have Daisy Jones, which was recommended to me by Cassie. However, I did actually read it in March. So going in again. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> It's great. This is Truth Witch by Susan Dennard, which is Brandy's pick, technically on my March TBR. Technically, it's taken a punishment, which means that it isn't on my April TBR anymore because it would have had to roll over, but now it's back on. So for Brandy's Patreon pick, I'm going to be reading Truth Witch by Susan Dennard. I was going to be reading this anyway because I'm part of the Witchlands Read Along, which is hosted by Jade at Jade Ray Reads to read this entire series like one book a month. This was the book for March. However, the live show is going to be like the second weekend in April so I was planning on saving it till last and reading it a little bit close to when the live show is so this is actually absolutely perfect thank you very much brandy for recommending i read truth witch this is the story of two witches i think one's a blood witch and one's a truth witch and the truth witch is sought after because she can tell when people are lying and they get embroiled in like a political plot that is all i know about this but i'm going to be reading this pretty early on in april and i'm so glad i actually managed to get this on my april tbr okay so here 
are my Bacopoli books for the month of April, but we do have Crown of Gilded Bones and also You Love Me to add onto here as well. I've crunched the numbers on this and it is surprisingly not as bad as I thought it was going to be. This Bacopoli stack adds up to around 2,450-ish pages. So that is definitely doable in the month, although, you know, last month was so much easier and I failed. So like, even though it's doable, whether I do it or not is like a whole different matter. Then when you add Truth Witch, it brings it up to 2,900, still doable. And with whatever the punishment book is going to be when you guys have voted on it, worst case scenario is that my core TBR that I have to read is 3,350 pages, which isn't ideal. Gives me very little room to read much else in the month, but I will anyway. But it is definitely doable because I've been reading around 4,000 pages a month, which is above my standard average. So I'm feeling optimistic. This could be the month that I do it because I find if I'm worried about accomplishing something, I'll actually put more effort into it than if I'm convinced I can achieve it and then I just don't do anything and assume it's all going to come together by magic. So this is my TBR for the month. Please let me know down in the comments whether you've read any of these books and what you guys thought of them. And please, of course, don't forget to also head over to my Twitter to check out the poll for my punishment book. I think I know what you guys are going to pick, but surprise me, I guess, actually, please. Please surprise me. <laughs> well, that is about it for this month's TBR, guys. So please don't forget to like if you liked it and subscribe if you want to. If you head to my description box, you'll find a link to my Goodreads Instagram and Twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those, as well as a link to my bookish candle website, the Instagram for that, and 10% off discount code. But that's it from me today, guys. Bye! Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate. You say you will go where nobody knows. With guns in under our petticoats. We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no.